It's a great day. My name is Che Brown, the happy entrepreneur, and welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country where we really are on a mission, and our mission is to empower, our mission is to inspire, and our mission is to provide you, that's right, you, the hardworking entrepreneur with all of the resources that are necessary to execute that big, 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 big vision you have for the people you were called to serve. And on this episode, we have the one and only Rosemary Winbush, who's in the building. And she's talking about, at the end of the day, being a better version of you so you can give more to others. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but we're going to find out about it. What's going on, Rosemary? How are you? I'm doing well. How about you? Oh, good, good. Thank you so much for being on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. I'm glad to be here. It's going to be exciting. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. It's, I'm glad to have you here. Now, folks are reading your bio. They're looking at the title. And I'm curious, when we talk about being a better version of you, um, at the, I'm not going to be a Debbie Downer here, but why are folks today even struggling with improving the quality of person that they are when they have almost every imaginable tool necessary that exists on the planet that they should be in an instant just get better? So here's the question. Why are people struggling today to be the best version of themselves? I, th I think there's two reasons why people mm -hmm. struggle with that. I think, number one, they believe lies that are not true about themselves. You know, we all have great potential. And if you explore who you are and your passions, you have something amazing to offer. Uh, I think that if you just give in to the, the real you, you'll become the real you. And also number two, I think people don't want to put in the work. They don't want to put in the work and the time that it takes to become the better person that they can become. Now, we do a lot of coaching. We do a lot of mentorship and a lot of uh, consulting. And when we start talking to people about their life and where they are and where they want to go, they, they, they don't want to do the work. They don't want to put in the time and the energy that it takes to become the better person that they are. But we work with them so that they can maneuver around those untruths about themselves and come, come out of the place where they get, a, get out of this lazy syndrome saying that I can do this. I can be better. I, I want better for myself. I want better for my family and I want better for my business. So those are two things I think that they struggle with. You know, we're going to talk to folks. Thanks for sharing, by the way. We'll come back to the folks that just aren't putting in the work. Um, but I want to talk to the person now that might be listening. Maybe you can help them out. You're like, hey, we believe these lies have been told about us. And they might be thinking, Shay, can you first let her know um, that I had a tough childhood? Uh, Shay, can you let her know someone out there listening might have said my family was dysfunctional? Is she aware of that? Someone else might say, look, I didn't have a start like everyone else. So what I'm telling myself is true. My mom wasn't there for me. My dad wasn't there for me. I didn't go to college. I stayed back in school. But whatever the story is to tell myself, and it's kind of an unfair question, but I'm going to ask you anyway, to talk to the folks who've had something that may have happened in their background, in their childhood, and they feel that's one of the things that's been holding them back. What would you say to them? Again, I know it's a loaded question, but they might be like, I'm not telling them. This happened. I mean, is she aware of what happened to me? And if she knew what I knew, she would maybe talk a little differently. So, so let's just talk to that group. If you're out there and you're watching and something's happened in your childhood, then I'm asking her to share her view of the world. Talk to us, Rosemary, if you would. Well, first I want to say you're not the only one that has those particular issues that's happened to you in your life. So you're not alone in the boat with that. But the thing is, you can't let your past experiences jeopardize your future life. So you get to write the new stories, the new script in your life about who you want to be and what you want to become. Uh, I've seen so many people, and we've all heard these tremendous stories about people coming out of tragedy, uh, awful backgrounds. You know, we got movie stars that tell us stories. We've got entrepreneurs that tell us stories about how they were in such entrapment when they were young or situations that they felt like they couldn't get out of, but they made it out. And then they have achieved great things in their life. So you have the ability, if you want to put forth the work and the time to get it done, you can become whoever you choose to become, but you have to leave that past life behind, those past things behind, and don't let them trap you and keep you in prison so you can't become the person you want to become. Mm. So well said, by the way. Thanks for sharing. As we look at the other side, 
Um, we have a lot of dualpreneurs on here, and I know yours about building better lives. I know you're a person of faith. I know you're a person, a person of development. I know you believe in family. And they might be wondering, what is Rosemary's view of the world on just trying to have balance? Um, because they work a full-time job, but yet on the other side, they're a full-time entrepreneur. And they're pouring as much as they can take care of the husband or taking care of the wife. Some of them are taking care of kids. Some of them are responsible for taking care of parents and other folks. And there's so many different things pulling at them. They're like, well, I guess here's the question. Rosemary, I'm taking care of everybody else. Okay. How does one find time to take care of themselves so they can be the best version of self when I got to be the best version for other people? Again, Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a counseling session, okay? So I want you to feel like it is. But but I know this, this has to be happening. It might be on your mind. And Rosemary said, I can ask whatever. She didn't give me a list of questions, ladies and gentlemen. So I can ask whatever question I want. So I'm curious. So you you lean in. If that's you right now and you're super busy and you're working hard, but you feel like you're not being the best version of yourself, Rosemary can share some ideas. And then later, I'm gonna, she's going to share how you can best connect with her. So the question, what do you say to the person that's busy taking care of everyone else? They feel like they ain't got time to take care of themselves. <laughs> Hey, you know what, Shay? We all have 24 hours in a day, right? So yes. how you manage your time is so key. It's so important. And listen, I used to do this. This is a story I'm going to tell you about me. When our kids were little, there was so much going on. My husband and I, we started a business way back then, right? But we were also working for individuals. And I found myself in a place where it was so much happening. I felt like I wasn't taking time for myself. So if I don't take time for myself, I can't be the best person for the people that I love or the people that I work with or the people that I work for if I'm not a well person in myself. So I scheduled every Friday for, now this was me, mama time, right? So I would take time, I would write it on my calendar. And if someone called me and said, can you do this? I said, no, I have another appointment. I had an appointment with myself because I wanted to make sure I was investing time, quality time in myself so that I could be the best person that I could be. So I'm going to say to you all out there, you've got time. We make time for everything else. And what's important to us should be the well-being of ourselves. So if we don't schedule and make time for ourselves, we won't be the people that we can blossom into becoming. Mm, so well said. And then um, are there any inner voices you tell yourself so you don't feel guilty? Uh, because, I mean, okay, ladies, I'm raising my hand. Okay, I'm raising my hand. But sometimes you, you feel guilty. You're like, gosh, I could, but I decided not to. Is there any uh, thoughts that you have around the inner voice that someone could tell themselves? So it count, I guess we make ourselves feel guilty. But I guess the question is, what are some inner voice or inner thoughts that we can have? Maybe the affirmations, I don't know. So you feel good about Spending time to do the things you need to do to take care of you and not feel that, you want to call it a guilty feeling? Does that sound pretty familiar? Yeah. That's that's it. I'm going to tell you this. I used to feel guilty. I would feel guilty about taking a nap. Oh, wow. Okay, good. <laughs> so I'm I, not alone. Okay, listen, good. but then I realized that's silly because being well means you really truly have to take care of yourself. It's kind of like an oxymoron. You can't do all these other things and not be well. So you can't be guilty about being feeling like you got to be well for yourself. So I got to the place where I said, I don't care what people think. If I know my body needs it, if I know my mental capacity needs it, I need to take time for myself. So that is kind of a, a lie again, making you feel guilty that you can't take time out of your life. And if someone tries to make you feel guilty, you just say, hey, I'm not saying no to you. I'm saying yes to me. <laughs> so that's what you have to do to get away from that guilt game because, you know, guilt and shame, uh, to me, they're not from God. So if you want to be a better you, you've got to take time for you. I love it. They're wondering now, who is this person talking? They're hearing Rosemary and Shay, slow down and then you can speed back up. But we'd like to know, she's giving out some good advice, but who is she? What is her backstory? And what's that defining moment? So two-part question, share your backstory because they want to know who you are. We haven't done that. Now everybody's going to read the bio. Some people are cooking right now. Some people are driving down the road. Some people are listening to the podcast. Some people are just watching it. So number one, who are you? So we know the backstory. And number two, what was that defining moment that you decided, you know what, this path right here, helping other folks be their best version, this is what I'm born to do. And this is 
Okay, so my backstory is very eclectic. <laughs> I'm going to say that to you first. So I'll start even a little bit further than what you would expect. Uh, since I've been a kid, I've always had a desire to empower people. I got a thrill or an excitement or an enjoyment helping people uh, become better at what they do, uh, whether it's just to cheer someone on or just encourage someone. I've always done that. But I've worked in corporate America for many years. And I've also uh, worked in ministry as a staffer at my church. I was actually a children's pastor uh, for about 20 years. And, but in doing all of that, it entailed more than just being the children's pastor because you're a staff uh, clerical person. Uh, but my husband and I, we own two companies. One is called Kairos International, which is a company that we pretty much do a lot of ministry uh, efforts through. It is a for-profit company but our focus is to uh, do ministry in the marketplace. And then we have another company, WRW International, which is a corporate design company. Uh, my husband pretty much uh, does most of the speaking and training through that, but I do some as well. And then um, I have just done a lot of programs uh, that I've developed. I used to do programs for about 10 or 12 years in the school systems here in Jacksonville, Florida, where I live. And uh, it's called the Best Me Program. It's a program that we have done um, intricate and in-depth studies with um, elementary and middle school students and helping them to become the best person that they can become. So, you know, we're still working on building better lives, right? And then uh, I've done some things for women's Bible study ministry called the Seven Movement and also a children's ministry international prayer initiative. So, with all of that, um, I'm also a Florida realtor and a notary and a military wife of 30 years. So I have a lot of things in my arsenal that I have gotten expertise from that I can draw from because I've been in many communities and built a lot of things in those particular communities. What do you enjoy most about what you're doing these days? And thanks for sharing your background. What do I enjoy most? Yes. Uh, I, I enjoy most being free to do what God has called me to do. And that is working with people individually or in large groups, whatever it may be, and seeing them being transformed into becoming who they thought they would never become. And that's the pleasure that I get from what we do. Mm. And of course, you never said it with military branch. You said, you know, you, you served as a wife of someone in the military for 30 years. Everybody said, hey, which branch? You can't, you, you, you can't just leave that out. You got to represent up in here, up in here. Yeah, so my husband was uh, in the, in the naval, uh, the Navy actually, but he's a, a 31 year naval uh, reserve retired officer. So wow. 30 years, Thanks for serving. Eight, yeah. eight active and 22 reserve. So I was with him. So we're good. <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah, you with him? You still, and you're still with him, from what I can tell. I mean, this is this is yeah, good thirty-five stuff. years. Good. <laughs> Congratulations yeah, 35 years. to you! Yeah. Wow. What's what's the secret to being together for thirty-five? Years? I know it had nothing to do with the show, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, I'm curious. I mean, I'm not thirty-five years, and I'm on my third marriage. Don't judge me, no. I don't. Y'all out there, don't judge me. So, what is your secret to being married for thirty-five years? And then we'll get back to our regular schedule program. We all want to know. I, I think the secret for us is uh, I know that God is the center of our marriage and we actually see each other through the eyes of God. And um, I believe that we are truly soulmates. Um, we have so many things in common, but we also, we learn, we learn to love together, learn together, and then we live together. And that's like another whole dynamic, you know, because we do we do some marriage mentorship, too. We're, we're both actually certified marriage mentors as well. So and that came about through ministry. But I believe God being the foundation of our marriage is truly what has held us together for all these years. Wow, that's a great start. Thanks for sharing. Now, yeah. the folks that are watching, they might want to say, Shay, can she give us one, two or three things that she would recommend that we can do to take a step towards being a better version of ourselves? Is there step one? Is there step two? Is there step three? And in general, if you don't mind sharing that with you, we appreciate that. And you out there, get your notes out. This is a good time to hear from an expert. That's all she does every day is make everyone else better. Isn't that cool to know someone's whole mission in life is to make you look a better person? It just, that sounds so cool to me. So what are your one, two, or three steps, whatever it is, that you want to share with the audience to help them be the best version of themselves? Okay, so it is three steps. So the first thing is to embrace uh, that you are great. 
uh, you know, a lot of times we put ourselves down. We're our worst critics. So if you can just write your own affirmation to talk about some of the great things that you do. And don't say, I don't do anything great. I don't care if it's cooking. I don't care if it's singing. I don't care if it's sewing. I don't care if it's walking, running, talk, whatever it is that you do great. Write down some great things about yourself and then begin to affirm in yourself by writing your own affirmation. I actually have some sample affirmations that I do give people as well. But I think that's the first thing is just affirming who you are and knowing that you have greatness inside of you. And then number two, what is the community around you? The people that are going to help you specifically become who you're supposed to be, whether it's your family member, whether it's a mentor or coach, whether it's a, an employer, an ally at your company, whoever it is, take an evaluation of the people around you. And if the people around you are not uh, it reinforcing the greatness in you, then maybe you need to make some shifts and changes. And that's that's common. We always say that. But I think we never really truly evaluate it and actually go through the plan in a step. Because sometimes it's hard to disengage or to not do as much with people that you've done it with for so many years, or even that people, uh, you know, they want to say, hey, I've done this for you. So now you need to do this for me, but it may not be the best thing for you. So I say, Again, get your affirmation of your greatness, then figure out who's the community around you that's going to affirm you in your greatness. And then thirdly, think about how you're pouring out your greatness, even right now to people. What are you saying to people? What are you doing to people? Because you know what? What you what you pour out is what you'll get in. If you feel that you need love, maybe you need to love more. If you feel that you need to um, be wise, in a certain area, maybe you need to look up some definitions about what you uh, want to pour out in wisdom or, or get that wisdom someplace else. But it's all about reciprocation. It's all about collaboration. And so what you give out is what you get back in. So I say the three steps to becoming a better you is know that you have greatness in you and then figure out who's around you that's affirming that greatness in you and then figuring out how you are pouring out that greatness to others because that greatness will then come back to you and uh, con confirm uh, who you are as you pour it out. So those are my three tips that I think will be really great for anyone to try. Wow, as you're sharing those tips, I was thinking about a segment we have that's coming up called Today is my January 1st. And you were sharing all the things that we can do to be great. And for those folks that tune in every night at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you know what I'm about to do, about to share the magical words. You can't wait to share. You can say it out loud if you want. Today, today is my January 1st. Doesn't that feel good? For all the folks out there that are joining for the very first time, welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Show. This is one of our segments. Today is my January 1st. It's our personal mantra. It represents a fresh start. It represents a do-over. It means our past, no matter how dark, no matter how bright, the past no longer equals the future. So the question I have for Rosemary, so far her life has been perfect, so we're going to find out if she's ever had any challenges. Um, but here's the question I have for you, Ro Rosemary. Number one, when you hear those words, today is my January 1st, what do you hear? And number two, what was maybe a setback, maybe a challenge, something that didn't go the way it was supposed to go? And how did you bounce back from it? Well, for me, I don't have a perfect life, but I have a good life, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but but that January 1st idea, let me tell you the first thing when I, when I heard you say that was the big thing for me was to realize that there's always half time. Because when you get stuck and you don't feel like you can get out of that rut, you always have to say, there's always half time. There's always some adjustments that I could make. And for me, one of the big issues that I used to always have, and I still kind of, you know, I'm working on that, is transition. And I think transition for most of us is challenging. In 2021 was the last uh, big transition that I had to make. But transitions are challenging for me because it's leaving something that you've always done or you've done for a while. And now you've got to come into this new space, rebuild, uh, get started again. It's that uncomfortable zone that you're in. And so I'm a type of person that I always want to do things with excellence. And I, I don't like the time of learning curves because I feel like I can't be 
as great as I could be because now I'm now I'm at the bottom or trying to figure out something. So that's kind of an awkward place for me, but I had to learn how to transition well. And so as I've been working on that for myself, uh, there's two things that I thought about is that when I transition, sometimes there's a forced transition where you don't have a choice and you've got to make some decisions. And then there's a transition that you know you need to make, but you don't want to make it because it's comfortable. And so the latter was me. In 2021, my husband and I made a huge transition because we said, okay, we're going to leave all of what we've been doing in corporate or in ministry, and we're going to dive into these companies and businesses that we know God gave us. So now we can work toward the vision. So the vision helped me uh, kind of navigate through the process of transition, because if I kept my eyes on the vision, if I kept my eyes on where we were going, it made the transition worthwhile and it made it a little more palatable for me as we were going through it. But that's kind of my little thing because I always want to be like on point <laughs> with everything. You know, one of my one of my favorite questions to ask, by the way, is of all the mentors you had, what's one of the most important lessons in life you've ever been given, right? What's one of the best pieces of advice you've ever been given? And for those folks that are watching the frame it, she's had so many mentors along this journey of life. She's read lots of books, some folks she may have met, some folks she may never have met, but if she had to reach back and say, you know what? This is one of the lessons that I've learned that I want to share with the audience. Here it is. So the question, what's one of the best pieces of advice you've ever been given? I think the best piece of advice that I've ever been given is to be hungry for what you desire. So if you're hungry for what you desire, nothing can uh, satisfy it until you achieve it. And, and of course, you know, we, we know the, the famous Les Brown say, you got to be hungry, right? <laughs> but I've heard so many people down through the years for me in coaching and mentorship, even for me to say, how hungry are you for what you desire? How hungry are you for that, that new job? How hungry are you for to have that great family? How hungry are you to have a better spiritual life? How hungry are you to just become better at what you do? When you're really hungry for something, you'll, you'll move things out of the way so you can achieve what you know you want. So being hungry for things, and that includes just things for life as well. Mm. What do you do for fun when you're not out saving the world, making a difference, <laughs> helping individuals every single day? Well, I love to travel. Okay. And... Um, I, I actually just love uh, spending time, you know, because we're here in Florida. I love spending time at the beach, uh, just kind of peaceful places in nature, that kind of thing. I love being outside. So those are some now we, things. We, we say travel, you can't just leave us hanging. I mean, you can't possibly say you like to travel and, and not give us one place or one destination. You just you just leave us hanging. Like, I just love to travel. Is there any particular spot that top, pops in your mind and why? I mean, we want to know. We're all on the edge of our seat. Like, where, where, where? Where does she go? Where does she like to go? Where? Well, my husband and I, last year, we took a trip to South Africa. So we went nice. to Cape that. Town, right? So I've Cape been there. Town, to me, is like Hawaii, the yes. tropics, and California all rolled into one because you have the beautiful mountain scenes. There's some beaches, but it's kind of like Hawaii there. But it's a mixed, diverse of culture in that particular place of Cape Town. And I loved it because I got to spend time near the water and I got to spend time, you know, like up on the mountains. So one of the great, um, great things you can do in Cape Town is go to Table Mountain. And from Table Mountain, you can see all of the Cape and it's so beautiful. So I just love uh, actually going on the trip with my husband. We were there for 14 days. So it was amazing. Uh, so that's my last, I would say, great trip that I took. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a nice one to go. I've been to Cape Town. Wonderful. I never heard it explained that way. That's good. <laughs> California and Cape Town all rolled into one. That's that's good. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Um, for folks that listen to my say, this is great. Uh, Shay, two questions as we come down the home stretch. Number one, what type of clients is she looking to work with if a firm's taking on any? That's number one. And number two, how can folks best connect with you? How can they stay in this conversation that you and I are having today? over and beyond the time that we have? 
All right, so my website, which is rosemarywinbush.com, is the easiest way to reach out to me, to connect with me. I'm on social media. I kind of hang out more on LinkedIn than any other place, but I'm on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and I do have a Twitter account. But um, I would say also, if you really want to get in the groove of what I'm doing, I do have a Facebook group called Building Better Lives Community. You're welcome to join it and you can get more information about what's going on and what's happening. We have some things coming up, but we are taking clients. We do some um, you know, speaking where it's large group speaking. So that's always open. And then um, the one-on-one -on -one mentorship is kind of like whatever our schedules and the bookings are, it depends upon how many clients we can take. But um, I'm always happy to help and I'm always here for you guys. And get on the website one more time. Rosemarywinbush.com. Real easy. My name. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's so cool. Thanks so much for being on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. We appreciate it. Can't wait to connect again. Thank you so much. And thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching, by the way, because without you, there is no show. So thanks for every share. Thanks for paying it forward. Thanks for folks that send us folks that we should be interviewing or taking a look at. We appreciate that, by the way. We read every comment. We take every direct message very, very seriously. So thank you. I never get tired at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time saying every single night at 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time that you are so awesome, that you're amazing, that you're just an incredible, compassionate, go-getter type of person. And for you, today is your January 1st. And because of just that one reason alone, your best is still yet to come. They ain't seen it yet. Your best is yet to come. Your best is yet to come. With that being said, my name hasn't changed. It's still Che Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. We'll make some good things how we connect again next time. Thanks, Rosemary. We appreciate you. Peace, everybody. Yeah.